and Karen, we mentioned Mitt Romney road testing that message. This is some of what he said on Saturday night in New Hampshire. You may have noticed that the president and his people spend more time talking about me and my Massachusetts health healthcare plan than entertainment tonight spends talking about Charlie Sheen. <laughs> I would repeal Obama. My experience has taught me that the states are the place where health care programs for the uninsured should be crafted just as the Constitution provides. Obamacare is bad law constitutionally, it's bad policy, it's bad for American families, and that's one reason why President Obama will be a one-term president. Something tells me we're going to be hearing that a lot from <laughs> Mitt Romney nice. over the next couple months. We're joined now by Yoshi Dresden, senior correspondent with National Journal, who has a story in this week's issue called The Prisoner's Dilemma about the Obama administration's decision to end its plans to close Guantanamo Bay, the detention center down there. Yoshi, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me on. So just to get started, here we are one year, two years after President Obama said he would close Gitmo, one year after it was supposed to be closed, it's still open for business. Was this naive of the president and his advisors to think that they could actually do this? I think it was. I, but I think part of it also was that at the time they said they were going to close it, everyone wanted to close it. If you remember, President Bush wanted to close it and spoke about that publicly. Robert Gates, who was then President Bush's defense secretary, the way he now is President Obama's, wanted to close it. General Petraeus wanted to close it. John McCain wanted to close it. So it may have been a naivete by the president, but it was also naivete perhaps by a lot of his other uh, Republican opponents. And one thing you document in this story, it's a fascinating read, is that really the conventional wisdom in Washington and in legal circles has changed on this. Now there's, there's emerging consensus that Gitmo really needs to be there. Yeah, and, and that in reporting it was, is what I found personally most interesting. The, the logic people have now is that uh, because Guantanamo Bay has been open, it has been transparent, it's been looked at so closely by NGOs, by lawmakers, by journalists, it's a much more transparent place than it was a couple of years ago. And that if you were to close it, there really isn't a better solution. Politically, there's not much of a chance that Republicans in Congress would allow for prisoners from Guantanamo to be moved to the United States. Legally, if you move people to Bagram in Afghanistan or other bases outside of uh, the mainland U.S., the prisoners would lose the rights that they have. So no one likes Guantanamo. It's not that people are uh, enthusiastic, but the feeling is it's better than anything else. You mentioned in the story about how the Thompson Correctional Center in Illinois, that was the White House's idea where they could start transferring detainees. The money just isn't going to happen there. Is that completely dead now once the funding isn't there? It, is, it, do you think the White House will try and keep pushing and chipping away? No, I think it's completely dead. And, and in fact, what you're going to see in the next couple of days will be an announcement from Secretary Gates from the Pentagon, uh, Eric Holder from the Justice Department, of new rules that will allow for even more uh, military commission proceedings at Guantanamo. So it's not just that it's not going to be closed, it's that you're going to see the pace of activity there accelerate pretty rapidly in the very near future. That's right. And, and of course, Yoshi, this was a, a, key, a key campaign promise that it doesn't look like uh, the, the president and the White House are, are going to keep it. According to this, maybe, maybe through the entirety of the term. Yoshi Dresden from National Journal, we appreciate you being with us. Again, the cover story out now. It's good. No Way Out right here, National Journal. Pick up a copy. All right. That does it for this edition of Top Line. For Karen Travers, I'm Rick Klein. It's twitter.com slash Rick Klein, twitter.com slash Karen Travers. Something tells me that Michael Steele is going to be able to get that contract. I don't know. I what do you think? I think so. Top Line contributor. <laughs> there you go. <laughs>